Hello everybody and welcome to another Python tutorial series. This series is going to be dedicated to the use of Python with sentiment analysis for the use of you know, finance, so trading, investing. So kind of a shift that we've been seeing over the years uh, has been institutions becoming more and more interested in the use of sentiment analysis or even just macro data analytics um, for the use of investing and trading. This is kind of a, it's a, not only a new field, but it's a very hard field and difficult field for anybody to get into for a few reasons. Um, one, it's just kind of a deep and convolusive field, but also it's very expensive to get into. So just buying the data from a source like Twitter or something like Stock Twits, which is like uh, you know, Twitter just for stocks, that's going to cost you something like five to $15,000 a month just to get data from these companies and then you still got to perform sentiment analysis on that and that's going to be another you know probably five to ten thousand dollars a month if not more so it's very costly to get into this luckily I happen to uh, know a guy right so I have a website and that website is sentex.com and we track sentiment analysis for companies so I've got a massive database so we have we track oh, the entire Russell 3000 we track the TSX 250 so Canada stocks the ASX 300, Aussie stocks, and the FTSE 100, so GB stocks. So we have all that, we've got a massive database, but I don't want to dump the entire database, but I will dump just the S&P 500 stocks. And so I was gonna give that as just a simple download on Centex.com, so anybody can just come by and download this data set. So it's about, um, I'll put it as a tarball, so tar.gz, and so it's about maybe 80 megabytes to download. It'll extract to about 400 megabytes, and it's about 4.5 million rows of data on all these companies. So it's a good, a decent sized data set. Covers the about 1.5 years. Some of them go up to about two years, like Apple was the first company, then we quickly added Google and Microsoft, and then over time more and more came. Really about 1.5 years is the size of the bulk of the data. And this is good and this is bad. I mean, 1.5 years is a good time frame, um, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not, especially when we consider what has been going on in the stock market for the last 1.5 years. For the most part, we've had a ton of QE, and so the stock market's really not even gone through a cycle. I mean, it's just, phew, just gone up. So it's not the, like, I, I would like to test this data more on, like, 10 years of data and, you know, a huge cycle. So um, that'll be good in a few more years. Maybe we'll re-upload. <laughs> anyway. Um, so that's the data set that we're going to work with. I'll go more into depth on that data set. It's also this S&P 500-ish, and I say that because it's actually got about 600 companies in it, and it also includes Bitcoin as well as gold, oil, silver, and copper. And we're actually going to be filtering those out of the data set, especially Bitcoin, because that's completely unrelated. Um, but it is there if anybody wants to play with it. And the data itself comes from... Um, does not come from Twitter or StockTwits. We do do analysis on Twitter and StockTwits, but we don't actually publicize any of that data. And uh, so this is just stock or information from companies like, you know, like you know, Forbes, New York Times, Barrons, this kind of you know these news hubs that release data. We go through their spider, pull that data, and analyze for sentiment there. Um, so we get that from about 20 major news sources and then we've also got another probably about 20 smaller news sources that just don't put out as much data. So that's kind of what the data set looks like. We'll, we'll pull that apart a little bit more later on and explain what everything means in the data set. Um, that's just some of the basics of what we've got. So some of the problems that we have with this kind of analysis is that the data, the two data sets, you know, basically stock prices and sentiment analysis are not married. Okay, so. What this means is, yeah, sometimes they're correlated in the sense that um, if stock price just jumps a whole bunch, suddenly sentiment a lot of times will jump based on the fact that, hey, stock price went up and we're all excited, you know, that kind of stuff. Or um, if stock price goes up, it's highly likely that some journalist somewhere is going to write an article on it, and it's probably going to be a positive article, you know, um, because the stock price went up, so there's obviously a reason. So sometimes it can trail price, okay? And sometimes it beats price. But what we need to do is we have to understand that because it trails price, we don't want to find ourselves in a situation where we have a trading strategy based on sentiment, yet we find ourselves buying after price has already gone up. So buying at the high and then doing the same thing and selling at the low. That's what we want to avoid. So we'd want to be able to, so you have to, we have to marry the data back together again and we have to reference both bits. So probably the, the first round of this video in the series is going to be 
we're going to try to keep things as simple as possible. Like this whole topic gets very in-depth very fast. So we want to keep things simple enough to start, but anybody who's brave enough to continue on will we'll dig a little deeper. Um, and we'll start marrying the two bits together. But first, we're just going to try and trade completely blind of what the price is at the time and just see, do we even make any money at all trading just blindly on sentiment? So we'll find out how that works. Um, so that's the idea. That's what we're going to do. In this video, we're going to um, go ahead and download pandas, download all the dependencies, and download the data set that we'll dump from Centex. And then from there, we'll just test the installation real quick, and then we'll carry on in the next video. Uh, and there, we're going to be just doing like a real quick run through of pandas, some of the basics of pandas, how to work with it and manipulate data. And then we're going to go ahead and hop into our data set and start you know, really working with pandas So and the data. So anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get the data set, get pandas and all that. All right, so now we're ready to download. Uh, first, I guess we'll get the data set. So to get the data set, you're going to head to syntax.com slash downloads slash stocks underscore I think it's stock centdex dot csv dot gz. So it's not tar dot gz. I lied. Um, just as gzip of the uh, csv. Hit enter. Good. And that'll download your stocks dot centdex. So this is the database dump. Okay. So while that's downloading, we can also head over. Um, we need to get pandas. And we also need um, matplotlib, and we want numpy. If you're on Windows, the easiest thing to do is to head over to this website here. It's basically this. I'll put the link in the description. If I forget to put links in the description like I do a lot, uh, please do just leave a comment and I will put them in there. Uh, but anyways, we head over here and we can type in pandas. Click on this and it takes us to the pandas here. And this actually tells us um, a lot of the requirements. So this is going to require numpy, date util, pytz, and very quickly, we're going to require matplotlib because we're going to want to plot up stuff, um, pi tables, all kinds of other stuff that gets used very frequently. So, um, so what I suggest that we do is we download all of the things that we need. Now, I'm assuming everybody has Python installed. Uh, if you don't, go to python.org, and here we'll head over to downloads, and you can either download Python 3.4 or 2.7 for this series. I'm assuming everyone is using Python 2.7. Um, it would have been really nice to use Python 3, but everything is not yet supported for Python 3, so it can be very tedious if you're trying to use Python 3. So I suggest Python 2.7. Now I have the 64-bit version, so I would download all 64-bit version things. If you're using a 32-bit version of Python, get all the 32-bit um, downloads. If you are on Windows, this is very easy. You will download everything. So you'd click on Pandas, and that would start your Pandas download for you. And then you would want to go ahead and just I hold control on the keyboard and hit um, numpy, date util, pi tz, and all of these scipy, matplotlib, pi tables, blah, 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 blah. And now I've just created a whole bunch of uh, windows here, right? And so now you can download numpy, you can download date util, all these things, get them downloaded, <laughs> okay? Uh, this one's still loading. Um, but if you're not on Windows, obviously you still need to download all these things. Um, I would at least start by downloading pandas, numpy, dateutil, matplotlib, um, and probably bottleneck, but maybe not bottleneck. Um, if you're not on Windows, just keep that in mind. And otherwise, if you're not on Windows, you need to go to numpy.org, get numpy. Um, you could also get the scipy stack if you wanted. Also, you'll need matplotlib, so go to matplotlib.org to download that. And then pandas, you can come here and download pandas as well. I think that they give you the source of. Um, yeah, on the PyPy Pi page. So if you're not on Windows, that's how you need to get these. So once you have all of these downloaded, install them, and now what you're going to want to do is actually check the installation. So go ahead and pause the video while you're downloading everything, and whenever you're done downloading and installing everything, uh, we'll continue on. So once you've got everything um, downloaded, you're going to want to test your installation. Make sure you can import and use this stuff. So the most important thing is we want to import pandas. So you want to make sure that you can type import pandas in your uh, IDLE. So I just opened up idle, um, and we're just typing this in, this in. We can import pandas. That's great. Next thing, you want to be able to import numpy, because we're going to use numpy a lot. So you want to make sure that works. And then also, you're going to want to make sure we can import matplotlib. And as long as you can import these three things, we're ready to proceed in the next video. We will start using some other dependencies as well. Uh, let me go back over. 
I would at least make sure that you have NumPy, DateUtil, and PyTZ downloaded. Okay. This other stuff, in, except for matplotlib, matplotlib, I suppose, you make sure you download matplotlib because we're going to use that really quickly. Um, this other stuff you could hold off if you're not on Windows because it's kind of tedious to download and install all this stuff. Um, so anyways, that's that. Make sure you can do all this, import pandas, numpy, matplotlib. If you're getting any errors or you can't figure out how to install something, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll help you guys out um, with your installation and all that. As long as everything is all set, though, you're ready to continue on to the next video, and uh, that next video is going to cover just some of the quick basics. We're just going to run through um, some of the basics of pandas. We're going to grab some data, plot some data, play with some of the data, um, and all that. So stay tuned to the next video. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.